Okay, let's go live with James speaking, TradingSites.io. Uh, I've been in some deep conversations all week with my three to four favorite employees, uh, ChatGPT5, Claude, uh, Gemini 2.5 Pro, and even Perplexity. I like Perplexity every once in a while. But I've been having a lot of really deep conversations on the best ways to apply AI when I'm creating all of this content for the people who want to start, build, and grow an education business. And I had a pretty good system, I thought, uh, set up until we had this working session all week. Now, I want to tell you about it because uh, they pointed out that I'm probably using my YouTube videos uh, the wrong way when I'm repurposing all of the content. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, kind of what they pointed out to me. I'm going to show you what I'm doing now and the way I've started to do it. And I'm going to make it available to you as you watch how you can take a YouTube video and turn it into a prompt to give to your students slash customers. See, in the past, I was doing the exact opposite. I would create a YouTube video. I would apply a prompt that I had in order to create some additional content. I'll show you exactly what I mean. So uh, when I do a video, for example, uh, this week, let me just pull out some of these ones. I did three videos in the last uh, three days here, actually four, actually five, but there's three that are here. Uh, if I take a look at my videos from the last three days, uh, I had these three videos that were done. Some of them are like 20 minutes long, 25 minutes long. It's not the link that's important. It's the fact that I had a transcript. And I've been talking about this for ages, that if you're going to build an education business, you have to have transcripts from the video tutorials that you have to be able to not only put them into your community library, that storage area where you organize and curate all of that great information that you generate as part of not only creating YouTube videos or educational content, but all the research that you do with yourself and for your customers. You got to start keeping it there to make sure that it's going to be available uh, in the future to all of these AI tools that are going to want to look for additional data and you want to make sure that you have yours available to it. So uh, I'll actually, I'll touch on this in a second, but I just want to show you what I was doing uh, first. Right now, what I would do, for example, if I would get this video and I have a couple apps to do it, but in many cases, what I would do is I would find the URL for the video for, here's the example, the future of teaching, Google Gemini Interactive Gems. Uh, I have a little agent to do this, but I just want to show you what happens manually. I would get the link for this. I would go to a little app that I have uh, access to that's free. This one's called youtube-transcript.io. And I would give it the URL and it would fetch out or get the transcript. I'll actually show you how this works. So let's, uh, we'll do it once. It'll, re it'll redo it, but that's okay. So here's the, here's the actual video that I did this morning. If you are sleeping in a position like and this. it's got an ad, but I'm just going to go and share it. And I'm going to copy the link. So I have that YouTube video that's there. I'm going to go to youtube-transcript.io. Uh, and we're just going to go and put in a new video link here. And what this does is it extracts the transcript. Now there's all sorts of other ways to do it. You can automate it, which is one of the things that I've done. But at the end of the day, the important part is I've got a transcript. And even if I wanted to have it in a different language or, uh, you know, edit it in terms of uh, uh, adding uh, timestamps, I can certainly do that. But in my case, uh, I've actually got the transcript copied. I have a transcript. So what I would do from here is I would go and I would use a prompt that I created to basically synthesize, summarize, take the key talking points, action items, all of that stuff out. And then I would put it into my library of tutorials. And in my case, uh, you know, here's one that I did uh, earlier last week. So I have the YouTube video and then I took the transcript and used the prompt to create, you know, a step-by-step -step guide. Uh, what's next? You know, how to use it to enhance your workflow. So I thought this was really cool, but I'm using transcript, use my prompt, to generate content. And after doing that, I realized that, actually I didn't realize ChatGPT and Gemini <laughs> told me that I was kind of doing it backwards when I was researching those other videos. 
It said, everyone's got the AI tools. Why don't you give them the prompts to do it themselves? Uh, why didn't I think of that? So what I did is I actually created a prompt that does the exact opposite. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to use that now. One thing is, is that I recognize that everyone has AI prompts or tools to actually do this. So why should I bother giving them the content when I can give them the tool to actually generate what they need to do that's personal to their situation and it's unique to them. It's not me regurgitating something from my prompt. It's me giving them the prompt that applies the framework or the main ideas that I tried to get across in the video and apply it to their unique situation, which is fundamentally different. So what I did is I went to Google Gemini and I had a little conversation here and I was talking to it. Let me just make it a little bit smaller so you can see it. Uh, basically, I said, look, uh, let me just do this one here, open it up so you can see. It said, uh, you know, I've got, I do three to six uh, tutorials a week. What I want to do is create a prompt that I can give you that creates high value text image prompt, uh, give it high text image prompt research application on the ideas from the video. And I said, my, my wish is that these would include a prompt or use, or even a prompt to give an AI agent or AI automation tool to produce the outcome uh, that a course creator or a teacher would do. So I said to this, I said, hey, I don't, I want you to give the student the prompt so that they could actually go and use it. And it basically came up with a really cool prompt. So what I did from here is I went to Gemini, and in my case, I created a custom gem and I did this for me, myself. What did I do on this one? I took that prompt that I had Gemini create, and I created a custom gem for it. And if I want to go and open this, what I can do is I've got my gem called the YouTube Prompted Summarizer. And again, that's just the name that I came up with. And in my case, what I need to do here is basically just paste in the transcript. So there's the transcript. And in my case, what I'm going to do is we'll just go and I'll hit the go button here and then you're going to see what happens. So again, I've, I'm going to get a prompt here to give people, not only the summary. I have some of it in, but you can see this is going through. It's thinking through all of the stuff, putting a prototype together, all of the additional tools that you would want to put in. So Here's the interactive setup that I have. Just make sure that I've got my videos in the right place there. It still has the key learning objectives. It has the core concepts that were there, the visual ideas and prompts, image generator prompt. So here's the infographic. If you've got Claude GPT or Gemini Imagine, uh, any of these tools, you can actually create an uh, uh, infographic. I'm not giving the infographic to them. I'm giving them the prompt. If they want to adjust it, they certainly can, but it's got the ideas that I have from this particular video added. An application guide. So that one's put in there. And an AI powered prompt. So the, here's the goal and the context and the instructions. So this is something that can actually be copied and pasted by the individual person. I'm not creating the content to give them. I'm creating the prompt to give them to create their own content. And how do I use this? Well, I'll just show you quickly. Um, if I go in my particular example, I'm looking at the training sites.io campus, the community here. The one that I put in was this one here called Interactive Gems. This is the one from nine hours ago. What I did is I'm using Fluent Community, which has a basic LMS in it, and I just did a real simple course. And in the course, this is how I do them and repurpose it. What I did is I put in the YouTube video and what I'm going to show you right now, but I also have the research and the notes that I took and the ideas that I had about how a teacher can create and apply the gems. And I also had one about why sharing gems and giving them to the person taking the course or actually that a student that's taking the course uh, that's there. I included all of my notes and resources that are there and then just talked about why these work. But here's the important part. What I'm going to do now, I'm just going to open these up and you can see that I don't have any notes here. 
I have the original video, but I don't have the notes. So why don't we do it this way? I'm going to edit the lesson, and I'm going to go back to Gemini, where I got my, uh, where's the one here? There we go. I've got my actual document now. I can do a couple things with it. One of them is I can just copy the response. I can go and share the response and export to Docs, which is another thing that I'm going to do. And the reason that is, is because when I get to open a doc here in the bottom, I want to add it to my community library so that the research that I did is here. And we're just going to do, we'll change the link of this one. And I have a naming convention. Um, I've got name to it, which is the one that I was working on, and I'm going to go and put it in the folder. So I have it. It was 592, so I'll have to update that one and move it. So I've now got it in my library, but I copied it as well. So I'm going to go back to the course. There's the lesson that I have with the video on the left-hand side. Sorry, here's the lesson in the video on the left-hand side I was just talking about. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this out. Actually, we'll keep it there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste in the information that I got from the gem. And why is this important? Because we've now got the visual aid ID and prompt to use, the actual application guide, and we've also got the power prompt that someone can use. So I didn't give them the content, I gave them the prompts to use. And every time I create a video now, that's exactly what I'm going to be doing, is not synthesizing data, I'm going to turn it into a prompt. So anytime I do a video, I've got something that someone can actually use when they identify that, hey, I want to be able to create interactive gems. This goes and shows you how to do it. So the question becomes, what are you going to do with all of your great content? What are you going to do with your community library where you've got all of this awesome information and maybe you're just regurgitating more by using an AI prompt to create more content. I think that there's a huge opportunity for all of us who really want to start building our own education business, and more importantly, teach people to think for themselves, make decisions for themselves, apply all of that information by giving them the prompts, the tools, and also the guidance and mentorship to be able to go through and apply it to their unique situation. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. This is all available to you in the campus at trainingsites.io. If you haven't joined, do that already. My name is James. Uh, like and subscribe, all the stuff I'm supposed to say as you start and build and grow your education business. Take care and expect the best.